Hello and welcome to the start of the second week of the Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games. I'm Philip Gazala and today we bring you the ninth episode of our daily chat show from here in Caen. And we are situated in the Dunano Stadium at the very heart of the action. Yesterday saw Team Germany display their dominance at the culmination of the three-day event with London Olympic medalist Sandra Ofarf clinching double gold with a foot-perfect jumping round. We caught up with Sandra yesterday evening, which we will show you later in the programme. Today, the 179 jumping competitors that represent a record 53 nations have a warm-up class in the 22,000-seater stadium, and the vaulters get a chance to practice their routines before both these disciplines get down to serious medal business tomorrow. Bringing the largest ever equestrian championships to the world is a major task. To bring us an insight into the progress so far, we're joined in the studio by Fabien Grubon, CEO of the Organising Committee. And I'm also delighted to welcome Roly Owers, Chief Executive of World Horse Welfare, the international charity that seeks to improve the lives of horses around the globe that are less fortunate than those horses we are privileged to witness competing here at the Games. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for joining us, particularly Fabian, you, because I know you have a hectic schedule. Um, Roly, we'll have a chat in a minute. I'll sort of catch up with Fabian because I know he has to rush off. But Fabian, the first thing I'd love to know is what is your what is your daily routine here at the show? What do you what do you get up to when you wake up in the morning? Well, I get up around five, and then uh, I come from our first meeting with the FEI at six, and then we we go into a global coordination meeting with the team. And then we have at eight, we have a, a meeting with the state of France and the di different authorities, you know, the police, the firemen, uh, et cetera, et cetera, until 8.30 to really uh, review the past days and, and prepare for the day. And then I, I go from, from meetings to meetings and, uh, and, you know, I have also some representation part, like television, meeting the partners. And uh, at night I try to, to spend some time at the village of the games for the concert or after the dinner to have a, a little beer with the team uh, when the village closes at, uh, at 11 in the evening and then, uh, and then I prepare for the next day. And do you actually get an opportunity to watch any of the competitions themselves? I try, I try. Yesterday I went to the horse ball demonstration because that's something I really like. It was unbelievable, the atmosphere. France winning on, on the last second. So really, really strong. But before that I was in the Donano Stadium for, for the, you know, the last leg of the eventing, which was also very noisy, Fantastic. back house. This was one of the most important thing for us once you get the sport really at the right level, which I think is what we're doing, is that this happens in front of full stadium. And so far we've been, we've been very lucky with that. Roly, your role here, you're here as the figurehead of, of World Horse Welfare. It's almost a bit, it, it's sort of a bit ironical. You're here seeing some of the most beautiful horses in the world, some of the best kept horses in the world, um, with knowledge of the best husbandry possible. That, that otherwise, they wouldn't be here keeping at that level. Tell us a little bit how World Horse Welfare are trying to educate the rest of the world, the less fortunate horses and people uh, um, with in, in terms of looking after horses. Well, what's great about something like the Alter World Equestrian Games is the fact that the organising committee have placed welfare so much at the heart of the games. And it's that example, the example that all international and elite riders have to the rest of the world, because the world does look at them. And so it's so important that our, our top riders do uh, and are seen to be taking welfare um, as central paramount to everything that they do. And so you can see that in so many aspects of the organisation of, of this uh, fortnight's games. But in terms of, you know, the biggest challenge we have around the world is ignorance. People, a lot of skills, a lot of equ uh, equine stuff, heritage has been lost for a variety of reasons. And now you have thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands of people owning horses without having the basic knowledge of how to look after those animals. And that's why we spend so much time in our international work through, through basic training programs to try and increase the level of knowledge of people so they can look after their animals for whatever use they're being used for. And I think the charity is now in its 86th, 87th year, something like that. And just tell us a little bit, because Ada Cole started it. What was the reason that she actually decided to commence with World as Welfare? 
She was a very, very um, sort of inspired woman who saw British horses being exported to the European continent for slaughter. Uh, and her issue wasn't uh, the fact that people were eating horse meat, because obviously a number of countries around the world do, uh, and still do in, in great numbers. Her issue was the conditions in which those horses were transported. And she, therefore, back in 1927, it would have started before the First World War, had the First World War not intervened. But in 1927, she established a charity. Um, and at its heart, that issue of being practical, the fact that even in today's world, we use horses. It sounds a rather yeah. tough word, but we do use horses, and the, the, the onus on us for whatever use that is, whether it's a working animal in Central America or an elite sport horse in Normandy, is for that use to be responsible. And that is the message that we really try and generate in all of our work, that responsible use of horses in sport and in leisure. And, and Fabien, do you, do you feel you have a level of responsibility to, to educate some of the public? I, mean, I was in, in the Games Village yesterday. I could not believe the crowds. It was packed. There were bands playing, there was restaurants where you couldn't get a table to eat. In the it was fantastic. But a lot of those people probably don't own a horse or, or maybe are just coming to see the top class athletes. Do you feel it's a bit of your responsibility to help try and get some of that education to them? I think it's, it's totally uh, within the project from the very start. Um, maybe, you know, we need to get more than 500,000 people come in and enjoy. It, it's not true that we have 500,000 people in, in Normandy, in France, or coming to the Games that know the sport in the way you describe it. Mm. Uh, most people, they're just casual uh, fans or they don't know anything, but because it's big, they come. So from the start, we decided we need to explain what it is. We need to give them the insight so that when they come, they better understand, they enjoy, uh, and first, and, and so they want to, to come back. I know it's not uh, heritage, it's not only building uh, building buildings or stadiums, it's it's building the knowledge for people to that they want to go into a club, that they get interested in the, the subject of horses. And uh, it's, it's a great passion. There's a lot of values into our sport. And I think um, we, have to, we have to explain this. We have to make uh, it very understandable for, for people that are far away. It's not that expensive when you want to start. There's a, a connection you have from your past, stories of men and horses. What's happening in the village is this introduction to the sport and, and, and it, it's working very well. Yeah. It certainly was, as I said, it was very, very busy yesterday. It was, it was a, the atmosphere was fantastic. The atmosphere in the stadiums have been also brilliant here, but it was just lovely to experience. Actually, it was almost a festival atmosphere down in the, in the Games Village yesterday. It was, it was really very, very good indeed. 21,000 in the stadium here, 21,000 in the village at the same time. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So what, we're the beginning of, as I mentioned, beginning of the programme, we're start of week two. Um, you've still got all your hair on your head, Fabian, so you haven't been pulling it out too much, or you're not going grey, that's, that's also for sure. Um, but ha what have your challenges been? The weather hasn't helped you, I guess? Yeah, the, the weather, of course, on Monday was, was terrible. Uh, we had to work a lot uh, on the cross country uh, because that was uh, the main issue for us uh, with the rain uh, and especially the parking lot. So, you know, we suffered a bit, uh, lots of work to, to make it happen on, on Saturday. But I must say, we, we got 15,000 cars in the parking lot in the day and we got 15 cars that we had to help go out uh, it went out very well out, out of the parking lot so we had a great day 50,000 people at the, the Ha National Dupin it never happened very difficult to do it again I think but uh, huge crowd unbelievable sport uh, you know the number one in the in the world saying at the end that he had the, um, the most difficult ride of his life but at the same time not not uh, one that was too threatening in terms of the security of the horse and the riders. The course was very well designed by Pierre Michelet, so all the riders could see it was very technical, very difficult, but at the same time very safe. So we had no casualties for, for the riders and, and the horses on the, on the track, so that was something we really wanted to do. The endurance race was also something we wanted to do right, you know, for the right of the sport and endurance going forward. I think that's something we did and everyone recognized, all the nations, the federations, and um, the public could see what is endurance. There were crowds all over the, the track uh, looking at the, the athletes, and I think the athletes also were really proud to, to be able to display what, what they do. Um, dressage was great, uh, para, 
frankly, in, in what we've seen, I think, uh, I think the, the first week was, was really great for at least for federation, for the general public. We still have a lot to do. We must stay focused on, on delivering each discipline. Now, uh, for us, it's a bit easier because we're really focusing on, on Caen. Uh, all our resources are coming back from, from the Ara National du Pain, from Sartilly, from saint Lô, to be working in Caen in the stadiums. We're having a lot of adjustment today, as you know, it's, it's, about, it's a rest day for many people. So for us, it's, it's a day to, to fine tune everything, to improve what we can improve. Of course, we're not perfect. It's very, very complex to organize. So um, we have to prioritize during the week and now today we need to, to focus on what we we didn't do last week to make to have a, bet, a better second week, even if we can. Roly, the, the the coverage you know uh, across television and the internet of of the sport here is obviously more than because media has improved so much, more than has ever been seen before. Does that help your cause? Does the does the the, the fact that top class horse, top class fit horses are now being beamed across the world to every corner? Anyone with an internet connection can watch. The Autoc FEI World of Christian Games right through, which is unbelievable if you think about where we've come in the last few years. Does that help you? Without a doubt it does. I think one of the biggest challenges we face um, both in Europe but also across the world is getting people to understand the relevance of horses and I think for a lot of people as we've been saying for those people in the village yesterday you know there is a perception that horses are somewhat distant to them they might be the sport of kings or you know for, for, for the rich man's plaything. they couldn't be further from that and they are still so relevant millions of people around the world enjoy riding as a leisure activity. The health benefits of riding are extraordinary. It's certainly in the UK and around the world, horses are being used to rehabilitate uh, injured servicemen who've come back from Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and of course, there's 100 million plus working equines around the world as well. So horses are still hugely relevant to people. And to be able to, for people to sit back and watch the sport they have over this fortnight is a great entree if that starts them to think, actually, they are still very relevant. You can see how popular it is. Um, and it's getting people to understand that horses still play a huge role in every single culture around the world and that's something we do want to sort of generate and, uh, and promote because it's only through that that we can they, an understanding and support of our work and support of the horse sector more broadly is, is going to be a huge benefit. Sure. Well Fabio we're going into week two um, from a, a logistics point of view for you are there lessons learned of anything? You know, I know there were some issues getting into Harrow de Pan, but the weather didn't help you. But I have to say, I was very impressed that coming in here, we're staying in Bayer. Coming in here, one day there was a field of a car park that was mud. The following day we came in and it was covered in tarmac. I, I couldn't, I've never seen anything like it. It was very impressive. So have some of those issues now, obviously you've been having to address these things as they happen. Is there, have you learnt from those? Are you hoping to have everything in place for this week? Yeah, of course, you learn every day, you know, you have to solve so many, so many problems that come every day. That's, that's what we like. So that's, that's the adrenaline of the of, of big events. Um, it's great to see that we have a team that, that you know, when it, when it counts, when it's tough, we get together and we make it happen. Like uh, the people in Ara Dupin, they didn't sleep, they work all night, they transform, as you said, a mud, a mud hole into a parking lot. This parking lot was key for us, you know, without this parking lot you cannot deliver. So we had to do it and, and, and I want to really thank the team, it was super what they did. Um, we, you know, w the weather is going to be good in the, week, the coming week, so that will help yeah. a lot. As you can see when we have sun, of course, we go to 20,000 people in the village and, and it's happening. And it's a lot easier for everyone because when it rains, every, everyone is more tense. Um, we, we are working a lot on what we're going to do for the media. I think uh, I must, you know, I must, uh, I must say we haven't been uh, to where we wanted to be with the media, so maybe it's time here to, to tell it. And uh, we, we're working a lot on that to improve. Uh, we're focusing all our efforts in, on the Darnano Stadium, which is going to be very important this week, the show jumping, of course. But the vaulting arena is ready. It's, it's huge. It's never been like that for, for vaulting, I think. It's a, it's a concert hall. It's really super. It's exactly what we need for this show. Um, the racetrack is going to be unbelievable for, for driving. It's in the middle of the city. Very beautiful shots. The television is doing a great work of really the best pictures around the world. 
I've seen the rainers, they were very happy, lots of energy. Uh, so we, we look at, at the first riders leaving now. It's, it's a bit sad already for me to, you know, you work so hard for four years and now you cannot even spend the right time you'd like to spend with those guys that really make it happen for you. And, and they're already gone. Uh, and then we're, we're welcoming the other riders. And I hope I have the time uh, when all this is over to, to really regroup with them, talk to them about what happened and, and exchange because for us it's already... Just a, a quick comment about when it's over, which will be actually sad for you and your whole team when it's over. But what, what legacy do you hope to be left behind? Of course, we're here in Normandy, a very, very famous, globally famous breeding area for horses. So what other legacies would you like to see left over after the Games? There, there are a huge number of things that are happening right now in, in Normandy uh, because of the Games. Um, because from the beginning, the Games were seen as a pretext. It's a big pretext, but it's only a pretext for the region to get side impacts economically, uh, uh, in terms of tourism, in terms of the impact on the, on the industry. It's big here. All the, the breeders are here. It was something we wanted to do. They wanted to have them see that it was for them. But while they're here, you know, they're talking to each other, they're looking at the future. We have 17 projects that have been identified from the start that are now being put into action. Uh, Diara Dupin, of course, is looking at his future. It's, uh, the many things are going to happen there. Lots of infrastructure have been uh, not built but improved. The Dornano Stadium, the Parc des Expositions is brand new. Yeah. Um, in Saint-Lô, um, there's a, a big facility that we invest more than 12 million euro in, th in this. So it's really uh, moving forward. It's moving forward also on, on other aspects that are um, technology. Um, you know, we use some of the local technology, for example, non-contact payment in some of our system as, as, um, as a showcase of the technology that's been invented in this region. Uh, we do a lot of things for clubs. I hope many people, you know, that have never been on a horse, that have experienced the Donaino Stadium, uh, will we'll want to go and, and ride horses. Yesterday I met someone from, from Normandy, you know, maybe he was 50, he was getting into the stadium, Donano Stadium for the first time. He had never been there. It's his stadium for soccer. He had never been there. He discovered the stadium in, a, in a, an equestrian setting. He discovered equestrian sports. Some people from Normandy, they know it's the land of horses, but never, you know, maybe, maybe because they're afraid, maybe sure. they, because they think it's not for me. They can see from the village and the stadium that it's really it's affordable, it's easy to understand, it's great values. Let's go to one of the 500 horse riding clubs in Normandy and let's do it. It's, it's, it's less expensive to ride than to play tennis maybe in Normandy. So, and, and you can do it very, very easily. And really from your point of view, of course, a, a, the Games for you is just another opportunity to focus the attention on the horse and, also, and, and get your message across as well. Absolutely. Coming back to that responsible use message mm. and obviously the, the FEI does a huge amount around ensuring it's a level playing field yeah. and it's a, it, that's right because it's sport but it's also right because of the equine athlete and the ethical responsibility we have to ensure that you know that their responsibility is placed at the heart of sport and to be honest if, if that doesn't happen then there's, then there's a pretty grim future for the sport so it's wonderful to be able to see that welfare is very much at the heart of what's going on at these World Equestrian Games so that those around the world can take their lead from that. We've had an association with the FEI for over 30 years and currently have a memorandum of understanding with them and so it's, it's, it's really important for us to, for that responsible use message uh, um, to be invited here to be able to see what uh, has been laid on and for that message to be promoted around the world and, and we, we look forward to working with the FEI as partners to do that. Great. Well thank you both very much indeed for joining us on Shea Philip this morning. Fabia Best wishes for the, the, the following week. I hope all goes well. As you say, the weather's set to improve, which is going to help things. Well, our roving reporter, Sienna, was out again yesterday. So let's go and see what she was doing. A few ups and downs in the Games Village. The eventers have just arrived for their familiarisation in the Michel Dornano Stadium. Now, it's very quiet here, so the atmosphere is going to be completely different tomorrow. Let's hope they perform under the pressure they'll have later. So how's your horse today after the cross country? Um, she feels great, she trotted up brilliantly today. Um, she feels quite happy to be here. A little bit of uh, you know different atmosphere and everything else, so looking forward to it. 
Yes, here to support the Kiwi team and also I look after the Brazilian riders. So uh, young uh, Gabriel Curry is on my uh, one of my old horses. So uh, very much uh, looking forward to seeing them jump too. So I see you're familiarising on foot. We don't usually see that. Why is this? Um, my horse takes a little bit time to warm up. And yes, it was a big day. So I figured if I just walk him around, and he's a calm customer anyhow. So we just walk once around and go back. Your horse looks great. How is he usually with atmosphere as well? Because there are going to be huge crowds here today. Oh, he normally is very good. So, but it's always quite different when we change um, uh, places and we come to a new place. They're always a little bit more excited. So, but I can't wait. Well, he can't wait either. Enjoy. Well, the riders seem surprisingly relaxed in there. But before that all kicks off, I'm going to go to the village. Wow, look what I've just found. I have got to have a go on that. Oh, um, it's a bit smaller than I'm used to. I'll give it a go. I think I might have to sit on top of the seats. Okay, so I'm guessing, oh, careful. This is so much fun. Oh, nearly crashed. Woo. Here we go, up and down. Oh, I'm going to crash it. Whoa, I think that's enough of that then. Ow. I'm going to have a bruised derriere tomorrow, I think. Oh, that really was quite uncomfortable. Let's see what else we can find. Oh my gosh, I've just seen a rodeo machine. I have a feeling I should be quite good at this because my horse is like a rodeo anyway. I've got to do this. <laughs> Oh, I do love a radio controlled car. Are you having fun over there? Can I have a little go? Can I try? Cizor? Oh, she's telling me how old she is. You're Cizor, you're six years old. Cizor. Driven this little one, I think it's time to go in a bigger one now. Well, that's quite cute. Check this out. Hi, Lisa. Can I jump in? This is a little bit more comfy than the smaller one I was in. Right, let's go. Gosh, it feels like being on a roller coaster. Oh! <laughs> so we're literally looking at the sky now. Have any of the riders had a go at this? Uh, we had the British team here today. Ooh, making my tummy go all funny. Got butterflies. Whee! Gosh, I hear a creak. Is that okay? This is the obstacle, not the car. Do not worry. <laughs> Phew! Well, thank you so much, Lisa. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Hope you have a great rest of your day. That was brilliant. Eventing show jumping's on now. I don't want to miss it. I just got back. That was great. Tina Cook's about to go down into her show jumping. I'm here by the warm up arena. The tension is really rising. Michael Young just jumped a clear round. He is no worse than third place. Now is Sandra. This is really getting tense. Last fence, last fence. Yes! Oh, fantastic. It's just unbelievable. Great. There's the winner, Sandra. It's been a fantastic competition. The best rider on the day one. Back to you, Phil, in the studio. Sandra, on behalf of all of us here, many, many congratulations. Two more gold medals to your collection. How are you feeling right now? Crazy question, maybe, but are you tired? It's uh, just unbelievable what's happened. I don't know really what I'm doing here with my two medals. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, having watched Vola jump that show jumping round, where I think that you were about 30 centimetres above every fence, I know, wh I know why you're sitting there with two gold medals <laughs> around your neck. He, he, what a performance from him. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. 
I mean, even, you know, Michael rubbed the first two and I rubbed another one somewhere around that, that which he got, got lucky with, but you were, just didn't even look like going near them. He's an amazing jumper. That was the reason I was really relaxed before the short jumping. Of course, every, every horse can do a mistake, but I knew that he is an amazing horse. Right. Now, I need to explain why we've got one of our FEI TV commentators, Ed Holloway, with us in the studio. Ed. You and Sandra have been an item for some time, and we've seen a lot of you on the screen this evening at the, after the coverage. How's it feeling for you? You must be pretty excited as well. Yeah, amazing, Phil. Um, Sandra and Voller are an incredible combination, and they've every German senior appearance, they've won a medal. And we, we all knew they were capable of such a, a big result, but to, to actually achieve it is a totally different kettle of fish, and Sandra's done it, and yeah, amazing. Sandra, I want to just ask you, you've, you had Voller, I think, for the last, uh, what did we work out, seven years. When you got him as a five-year-old, what was your first 12 months? What was the first year like with him? Did you, you know, you must have obviously, every, every rider dreams of Olympic medals and, and world championships, but when did he first start to show you thinking, you know, I might have something here? Um, he was, from the start, uh, on he was an amazing jumper so that was really good his dressage was totally normal his trot very small <laughs> um, and in cross country when I started to do cross country with him he had uh, from the first day on a, an amazing attitude he wanted to do that he had fun in cross country and I only did in, in the first year pre-novice and novice and nothing more and um, yeah that was great that was more fun but that was not that we started to think about um, world or olympic games so that was far away from us i think that was the first time when he was seven at the at the seven years world games in lyon for seven years old horses there we were third and there i had a really amazing feeling that i thought oh maybe that can be a really great big horse now um, your parents, of course, have bred horses over the years and, and you've given them plenty of opportunity over the last two years to be the happiest parents in the world. Were they here today? Are your parents here this weekend? Yeah, my parents were here and my brother was here, so that was really nice, Great. yeah, together. Tell us about a little bit about Voller in the stable. Is he a nice chap to have around? Yeah, of course, he's uh, the best horse you can wish. He is <laughs> um, really sweet and and, yeah calm and a little bit sensitive with with other people but um, he's trusting me to 1000 percent and yeah. that is uh, yeah really nice um actually a very high level of mutual trust i would say you trust in him as well of course yeah yeah, of course. yeah. ed you've been covering the raining here for fei tv doing the commentary and i uh, three nights ago I witnessed you saying to Sandra, you need to come over to the railing because it's really exciting. You need to come and watch this. Um, something tells me this might have just topped that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love my new sport. Phil, it was great. But yeah, yesterday I went to the railing individual final after cross country, which was amazing. Um, yeah, watching Sandra go cross country yesterday was not easy the last to go. And a horse she loves. She's only got one horse at top level. Mm. She hasn't got a, a, a string of them at home. So we have to look after him. So that was the, the, the challenge to try and get, it, get herself to a position where she could win a gold and also have a horse for next year and years to come. Was, that was the difficult part. And that's what I think we're very proud of, it, that she's actually done both, which is sure. incredible. So what, um, at 12 years old, what will you do with him now? He's done everything that's been asked of him um, this, you know, this year and la in the last couple of years. What will the plan be with him now? I don't know yet. I only know that that was a really hard weekend for all horses here. Um, the cross country was really hard work for them. And then to drive over one hour to Corn and a new stable and again, short jumping and this and that. I think uh, first of all, he gets a big break. And then I think what, what I do is next with him. Great, just see what happens, see how he comes out of it, great. And what about young horses? You mentioned you, you just got the one top level horse, and um, mind you, some horse. What about young horses? Have you got young horses coming on? Yeah, I have a few young horses. I have another horse on three star level. Um, yeah, that is also fun, and we will see if the next follows in this day.
Yeah, <laughs> let's keep our fingers crossed and hope so. So, w when do you leave the? When do you leave Caen? When do you go home? I think we have a nice party tonight. <laughs> I think you will have a nice party tonight. And um, I think we leave tomorrow because yeah, Waller needs a break and he has to rec recover a night, and then we go back to Germany. Great. Well, we're extremely proud here on FEI TV to have you in the Shea Philippe studio, bringing both your gold medals with you. Thank you so much for rushing, because I know that everybody wants a bit of you. So we're extremely proud. Thank you very much indeed. And Ed, thank you also very much for helping us get a few moments with Sandra. No thank you both very much. Thank Many congratulations once again, Sandra, and good luck for the future. Thank, thank you. you. As you could see on my report earlier, what a day it was yesterday with the final of the eventing. The horses trotted up at Harrow de Pin after cross country, then were moved in convoy to Stade de Nano for the final show jumping phase. A fantastic crowd gathered in the main arena to await the teams. The German team stormed the competition with Sandra Ulfart taking individual and team gold. Just incredible. Great Britain took silver with a fantastic round from Zara Phillips and the Netherlands took team bronze. Claire Balding tweeted, clear for Zara Phillips and fastest so far. Great effort. Hashtag WEG2014. Our very own John Carl tweeted a fabulous photo of the French team celebrating a clear round from the kiss and cry. He said, really enjoying this photo of French celebrations today at the WEG2014 Eventing World Championships. FEI Instagram photos of the Germans team gold medals with the stunning bouquets of flowers. The show jumping kicks off this week in full force, but sadly, Ben Mayer has had to withdraw from the team due to Seller sustaining an injury. He tweeted, Seller will recover at home this week and I wish my teammates the very best of luck in Normandy. Hashtag WEG2014 at British Show Jumping. I'm back tomorrow with more exciting social media updates from the final week of WEG 2014. From me, Sienna, see you then. Well, that draws to a close the ninth episode of Shea Philip. We'll be back tomorrow, and of course tomorrow sees the start of the show jumping and the vaulting. We'll see you then.